gun grab. And welcome in New Jersey Congressman Jeff Van Drew. Now, Congressman Van Drew is a member of the House Homeland Security Committee. Congressman, great to see you. It's great to be here with you. Thank you very much. Well, you know, we've, we've heard so much from Democrats, and we've talked a lot about their desire to do a lot of this stuff without any Republican support. I can't imagine there is any or much Republican support for any of these gun control measures. I know eight members of the uh, Republican House members did sign on to one of their gun control measures. But what did you think of the president's speech yesterday and what he wants to do? He says, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think two things were obvious yesterday, at least two things. One, um, he doesn't understand the Constitution, which is hard to believe for somebody that has spent so much time in government. But uh, the Constitution is what guides us through, you know, governing our nation. And I don't like those words because those words seem to indicate the beginning of no longer following or listening or understanding or caring about the United States Constitution. That is extremely dangerous and leads us down a very bad road. He's wrong. It is absolute. It is clear. There is a Second Amendment right. It's not complicated. There Secondly, I'm sorry, but secondly, um, I think he's got to learn a little more about these issues he's speaking about. So um, as you already pointed out, it's not the American Federation of Teachers that uh, is going to receive an appointment. It's the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms that govern those issues, including firearms. So um, it, it, that was a little bit humorous. It'd be pretty funny to see a bunch of teachers involved with this. And thirdly, I don't think he understands the cause of the problem. Real quickly, good Americans, law-abiding Americans, keep receiving the blunt end of all this legislation. It doesn't make sense. The problem is crime. If you really wanted to do something, work on cr the crime increases that are occurring in New York City or in Chicago or in many other cities. Yeah. If you really want to do something, then you would worry about mental health and really start having good public policy for mental health. This is a cover when you don't have the proper public policy. A part of me is left to think that this announcement, you know, obviously timed with some of these incidents we've had recently, these mass shooting incidents, but it's really just, again, uh, you know, divert our attention away from what's happening on the border, divert our attention uh, from the lies that the administration has been busted in as it relates to the Georgia uh, voting story. Uh, there are several things here, and this is what they want to focus on. But I think there's also a theme woven into President Biden's speech yesterday that we hear from a lot of Democrats, and that's, look, Either get on board with what we're trying to do right now, or we'll move ahead without you. We don't need Republican support. We don't need any support from the other side. We can do this with or without you, and most likely we'd rather do it without you. This has been the worst example of a democracy in a republic the last few months that I can ever remember or have ever seen. And I've been involved in government for a long time. It's shameful. Uh, it's hurtful to the American public. We are supposed to work together. And it's not that Republicans don't want to. I know I want to. But these things are done. They're just laid out. Here we go. We're not going to listen to the Constitution. We're once again going to infringe on the rights of legal good people who own guns, and we're not going to do anything really about the real cause of the problem, which is crime, the real cause of the problem, which is mental health, the real cause of the problem, which is undoc undocumented immigration. Yeah, let's talk about right. that. And let's talk about we it. Want to focus away. Let's talk about the border right now, because, you know, it, again, I don't know what day we're in here, uh, maybe the 12th day, but Kamala Harris has still not gone down to the border yet since she was tapped to be the border czar, maybe the eighth day. I'm losing track. We know she hasn't been down there yet. Um, um, she had she did make a phone call to the president of Mexico, but I want to focus on the real cost, both the human cost here and the monetary cost. The Biden administration is spending at least 60 million dollars a week on caring for more than 16,000 migrant teenagers and kids at DHS shelters. 60 million dollars a week, Congressman. That is an astounding number. 60 million dollars a week, 800 dollars per migrant per day. That's another astounding number. Yeah. It is mind boggling. So the human cost, the human cost and all the damage it's going to cost to our country, all the disease that's being brought in, all the problems that we're going to have with the drug cartel and more drugs being brought in, the, the shame of what's being done as literally the drug cartel 
literally buys these kids, brings them over, uses them as drug mules, um, sexually abuses them, physically abuses them. Uh, that is not, that's, this is supposed to be a more humane way of dealing with immigration than what we were doing. We had agreements with the Northern Triangle. We had agreements with Mexico, places for them to stay. We were building borders. A sovereign nation must have borders. Right. It must have borders. And literally, this is just a complete and utter breakdown. I, I was speaking yesterday at, to a group of people, and, you know, I, I actually ended up speaking a little longer than I wanted to and still didn't even cover half of the things that are going wrong. We've never seen this in our country. We've never seen so many things going wrong so quickly and so terribly. It, it really is sad. We have to save our nation. The number of unaccompanied minors being apprehended is like six times what it was uh, at the peak under the Trump administration. You know, also just across the river there, Congressman, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo included more than $2 billion in his budget proposal uh, for illegal immigrants in that state. You know, makes people wonder what are we doing in this country? Where are we allocating our resources? Where our real priorities are? We're out of time, unfortunately, Congressman. We got to run. Always look forward to talking to you again. We'll see you soon. It's great to be here. Thank you.